John, many atheists would point to evolutionary psychology as a way of completely explaining religion without any residue. So once you do that, you show the psychological development, the sociology, the anthropology, very good explanations. They conclude that therefore there is no antecedent of that religion, which is some sort of a God or ultimate mm. reality and that we can explain all of this in very naturalistic terms. Uh, mm -hmm. I kind of go with those arguments in terms of, uh, of religion, but I'm not sure that means anything. Well, I think we have to be aware here of something called the genetic fallacy. And, uh, the word genesis here refers to the source or the origin or the cause of a belief or an experience, because evolutionary psychology seeks to explain the origin, the cause, the genesis of religious beliefs, religious experiences. Um, the fallacy consists in supposing that you can move directly, immediately, from what you know about the genesis or the origin of a belief or an experience to a conclusion as to whether that belief is true or false, justified or unjustified, or whether the you know, experience is one that really gives us knowledge of uh, some existence beyond itself. Um, so, so that's the first thing. We need to be careful not to fall into the genetic fallacy. I mean, you can use all kinds of examples to, to show why it is a fallacy. Um, I might be very, very opposed to smoking. I might think smoking is a terrible thing, very, very bad thing. What caused that belief? Well, the belief is caused, as a matter of fact, by certain things that happened when I was a child. When I, you know, with my emphysema I was, or my uh, asthma or whatever it was that I had, I was really, really troubled by smoke. Or maybe I have this aesthetic thing where I just really hate the yellow, you know, fingers of smokers. So that's what caused me to think that smoking is a bad thing. And yet it doesn't follow from that, that my belief is false, because we know smoking is a bad thing, right? So we still have to ask, what are the reasons that support the belief? So the belief might be fully explained. Religious beliefs and experiences might be fully explained by evolutionary psychology. And yet we might still have to ask uh, the question, expecting a, an affirmative answer, question, is there, is there uh, some truth here? Certainly, it, it helps us uh, if one is looking not to believe in God to show a non-spiritual uh, uh, or non-supernatural mm. development of religion. If, if we didn't have evolutionary psychology, then the claim is, is that people believe in religion. There are religious groups because God chose it. God yeah. picked his church. God mm -hmm. endowed a chosen people. God spoke to, to prophets. In, yes, uh, I, th I think there is still a way of, Arabia. there's still a way of turning, um, what evolutionary psychology can produce into a problem for at least traditional religious beliefs. Um, as long as we don't try to move directly, as I suggested earlier, uh, to the conclusion that they must be false because we've explained them. Um, we might do so indirectly. We might say, well, God would never use a mechanism like that if we're talking about belief in God. Okay? It could be that there's some sort of immaturity that's exemplified by religion and that evolutionary psychology manages to expose. And so we have this extra premise that God would never uh, allow religious belief, belief in God, to be produced in that way. Uh, and so we might get the conclusion that uh, that the belief is false or that it's unjustified. Um, but in this case, uh, God may very well have allowed that to happen. I mean, it, sure, it, that's what theists will often say. They'll say, "Well, why don't you suppose that God just uses that causal mechanism to produce the the belief or the or the experience?" But we have to look at what kind of mechanism it is. We also have to think about this. We have to think about. Uh, the power that we might have in science to, to replicate the circumstances in which that mechanism operates. And so imagine a case where you know, a scientist with a probe, a brain probe, is able to elicit certain powerful religious experiences. Which at will. they do. At will. It seems that sometimes they are able to do that already. Mm -hmm. Now suppose that became you know, just clearly uh, possible uh, and, and you could just elicit this sort of experience at will. Well, you might be inclined to think that God isn't really being present to that person every single time the the uh, the event occurs. I mean, is 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 God supposed to be at the mercy of a brain probe, mm -hmm. uh, right? I mean, uh, so what happens is this: the theist then gets a, a reason to think that at least sometimes religious experiences, apparently of God, are not caused by God. So when she goes out of the science lab or whatever, wherever she's had this uh, done and has an experience you know, in ordinary life, apparently, of God, she has to ask herself, what if it's one of those times? Which one is it? Yeah, and now there's a kind of skepticism about 
the ultimate source of that experience that becomes possible. I think that's entirely legitimate. I, I, I don't yeah. think you can get away from that. Uh, and and that's, that's one of the many reasons that I would give for being a, a religious skeptic, uh, especially when it comes to certain traditional religious claims about God, which are often buttressed, especially in philosophy of religion today, by appeals to religious experience. Yeah. On the other yeah. hand, that if there is a God, and if that God wants human beings to experience God, there has to be a brain mechanism in order to do it. I sure. Mean, you need eyes to see. Yeah. Just, the same Just visual way. experiences, ordinary sensory experiences yeah, require I mean, so there, there to, to be... be a way that you can yeah, appreciate sure. a, a, a God kind of experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and if God requires uh, or be human beings to be in organizations to mm -hmm. worship or whatever, if that's part of the system, there has to be a mechanism for that to occur. It's not going to be sure. just jammed together in mm -hmm. some in mm -hmm. some command way. It has to be a mechanism. Yeah. So, so you can build a consistent argument either way, which, uh, which... Well, you can say that if God exists and is known to people through experience, then at least sometimes religious experiences do um, have God behind them, as it were, um, causally speaking. The, the question remains, though, the question we were asking earlier, how do you know you're in one of those situations instead of the alternative one where the experience occurs and the natural explanation of it gives the whole story? Per personally, from my point of view, I would never trust a religious experience. I mean, mm. that's a, some people think that may be a very sad thing to say. But a lot of people are just waiting for religious experiences. They think that's when they yeah. will finally be able to believe. But you're not one of those, eh? Not, not, not at all. Because uh, if I would have one, I would, I would immediately find it. Uh, I'd be very skeptical yeah. of it. And mm -hmm. I'd be very scared of it because uh, I, I don't want to fool myself into believing through some emotional experience mm -hmm. or, so, or some odd and, and we're really physiological just, experience. We're really just starting out in, in the process of explaining such things. I mean, evolutionary psychology. And its present development is only really the tip of the iceberg, or at least a potential iceberg. And so we have to think about what evolution might discover in the future. I myself think, though, that when we broaden things out that way to include the future, then there's a way of turning evolution and evolutionary thought in the direction of an argument that favors religion instead of opposing it. Although the religion isn't going to be the traditional sort that we've been talking about, it uh, would instead be uh, perhaps a religion without God, without any details at all, the sort of religion that would be appropriate for a very early stage of evolutionary development. I think that if we think about evolutionary issues long enough, think looking not just to the past but also to the future, we'll see that we've just begun. And so we have to start thinking about religion all over again, thinking about what sort of religion might be appropriate to such an early stage. And we have evolution to thank for that.